their parents have paid a, a people smuggler from the other, other side in France and put them across in this treacherous journey. And it's almost like, where does it end? This is a continuous cycle. Absolutely, it's a business that's being supported by our government before the human traffickers, because if they cut this trade to stop, the yeah. people that are pushing these people across in boats won't make any money because the route won't be possible. But all the while we're allowing it to happen, <laughs> we're just putting cash in human traffickers' hands who have no care about these people that they're sending over, yeah. despite what the media claim, yeah. they really don't. This is Lewis Brackpool for Rebel News and today I'm in a very misty Dover in the south of England. Joining me today is Steve Laws, former UKIP candidate and citizen journalist. Steve, lovely to see you again. Good to see you mate, always is. So, you've had some news recently where you've been taken off social media. Why do you think that is? Personally, I think the reason they've taken me off social media is because of what I show. I show that it's all young fighting age men being ferried in by the border force and the r and when really they're just illegal immigrants and they shouldn't even be coming over. But the reality is, the people that share my content, are it goes far and wide from MPs, political candidates, political parties, journalists, they all use my information and vid videos, images that I put out, and it reaches the masses to a wider audience. And I don't think they like that, to be honest. And you've been doing this for two years, I believe. Yeah, give or take about two years I've been covering it. Yeah, it's, it's been going on a while now, I'd say. So could you explain a little bit to the viewers that might not know who you are, a bit more of nuance and what exactly you do document? Well, so really, to simplify it, every day, or give or take every day, I come down to the docks, I film the illegal immigrants arriving. Usually they're coming in by the border force or the RNLI. If there's a beach hand landing that happens, I'll go down and try and cover it. Mm -hmm. I also write articles covering what happens, as well as sharing images on social media, as well as any information and stories surrounding illegal immigration. Mm -hmm. I highlight that and basically just do the best I can to make the public aware of what's going on, because two years ago, nobody knew this was even happening. Well, exactly, and you know, the legacy media don't really like to report on this majority of the time at the minute it's, it's the ukraine russia situation so you don't actually see the ins and outs of what's going on here no absolutely that's what i do when i cover here for instance the media they come down there show the odd boat coming over then they're focused on the women and children and then they leave it as that they don't show you the fact that there's coaches parked up there's a new multi-million pound facility mm. there's new places all over the country to process migrants and the problem's just growing, but none of that's being shown. It's simply, look at this poor woman and child that came over. Mm. It's almost like it's spinning it in one sort of narrative, am I correct? Yeah, they're not technically lying, but they're not telling you the truth. Right. And that's what they consistently do. Yeah. That's how they get away with it. And I came back, oh, well, I was here not too, not too long ago and I met you for the first time and we went down to the facility and had a little look and um, done some monologues and spoke about what was going on. Have things changed since I last saw you? Oh yeah, absolutely. The, um, the facility that you would have seen when you first come down, that's been pulled down now. They said it wasn't safe for the migrants and they've right. been moved into a new multi-million pound facility, which is just down there. Right. As well as they've invested in new vessels, which should be coming at the end of the year. But the new vessels are not to deter the boats. They're obviously to bring in more people at a larger scale. Mm. So the problem is just going to grow. Mm. Could you explain just what's happening there? Well, basically, over there, Seekers just left from the docks where it's just unloaded illegal immigrants. They'll be heading back out into the middle of the channel, most likely to be meeting the French escort where they'll be ferrying in more illegal immigrants back to Dover. Right, OK. So like a taxi service? Basically, basically. a taxi service, but a lot, lot larger. Right. As the Seeker left the dockyard, I was interested to see Steve Laws' type of reporting. So I asked whether I could go down with him and see the crossings for myself. So could you just explain about what's happening right now? Well, the r and is just pulled in at the docks and now they're unloading the illegal immigrants that they've just picked up. These people have came across the channel in dinghies from France. Right. Okay. And this happens quite regularly? Almost every day this happens. Hundreds, if not a thousand a day sometimes. Wow. Numbers are growing rapidly and as you can see they just get taken straight in and loaded onto the bus and then straight to the processing facility. Well I must say this is my first time actually coming down and seeing uh, a landing happen. So it's quite actually surreal to see it first hand and obviously you can see the border force there um, just making their way out too. Yeah, they, they, they'd be bringing in the dinghies that the illegals crossed in over, that right. the, uh, the, the dinghies that the people on the island alive boat, for instance, use. They pick them up mid-channel, ferry them across so they don't have to complete the journey themselves. Right. So, almost like a taxi service, really? Pretty much a taxi service, yeah. Exactly like that. It's 
quite shocked. This one's a charity fund for taxi service. The main thing that the editors of the media want to see is the pictures of little kids, so mm. that's what's going to end up in the paper because right. it paints the narrative that they're vulnerable yeah. and they're fleeing wartime, but the reality is it's young guys and aged men, yeah. and that's what's coming over. Yeah, and it, it makes me feel um, sad almost to see when you do see it in the media of the of the children because you think their parents have paid a, a people smuggler from the other, other side in France and put them across in this treacherous journey and it's almost like where does it end this is a continuous cycle absolutely it's a business that's being supported by our government before the human traffickers because if they cut this trade to stop the yeah. people that are pushing these people across in boats won't make any money because the route won't be possible but all the while we're allowing it to happen <laughs> we're just putting cash in human traffickers hands who have no care about these people that they're sending over yeah. despite what the media claim yeah. they really don't yeah well, it's almost like uh, a way to trick people into into feeling bad is that correct to yeah say? it's absolutely it's just misleading their emotions into thinking that it's mainly women and children that are coming over but right. in reality it's all young men they're starting to clear up the life jackets now because they don't want the press to get some good shots uh, on what's what's basically happening around in this area it's my first time coming here and actually witnessing a landing so to see it firsthand is pretty shocking that was a pretty smooth and quick operation and you see this quite a lot um, could you just run through once again what just happened and what's about to happen next? Well, as you see, the RNLI lifeboat unloaded the illegal immigrants and then they took them up the walkway and then quickly put them onto the bus so the photographers can't get pictures as quick as possible. Right. And then they load up all of the life jackets that they've used across the channel, put them onto the bus and then they drive the bus literally 30 seconds around the corner to the new multi-million pound facility. And the reason they use that is because you can't see what's being filmed because before they used to have a, new, a facility where there's a few tents and a couple of porter cabins just mm. at the top of that rampway yeah. but since they've moved that the press and anyone else who wants to cover this they can't see what's going on inside so they have no clue what's happening i've been told that this is basically just a conspiracy and that the government no they're not facilitating this they're not a taxi service it's none of that and i almost felt weird in almost seeing it firsthand. I mean, you've been doing this for a long time, so I'm sure um, you know, you're quite used to seeing all of this. Um, am I mad for, for saying that? Well, absolutely not. This is the thing your gut instinct tells you that, no, the government's not bringing in illegal immigrants. They're not helping with illegal immigration and it's not a conspiracy. Mm. But obviously, once you're standing here watching it firsthand and you're seeing how smoothly mm. it's run and how efficient the whole process is and how quickly it's done, yeah. you can't help but think that this is really wrong. Yeah. And that's why your gut instincts is telling you that it's wrong because ultimately what you're seeing is wrong. This is the one thing that bothers me about like, illegal immigration, for instance, is the amount of people that cover it online. They've never seen it firsthand. They've never even witnessed what's happening, but they're mm. spouting off as if they're experts on the subject and they know how the ins and outs happen. Sure. For instance, you'll see people sitting, all sorts of media, from BBC News all the way through to GB News, sitting there talking about events that have happened at the docks. Right. And like, I'm standing at the docks, that hasn't happened. Mm. Or how you're saying it has happened is not how it's played out. And yeah. everything's exaggerated or manipulated because no one comes down here and sees it because at the end of the day, who's got the time to go and stand at the docks? Well, exactly. And it's, all, it's, it's really weird to say, but it's almost like I shouldn't have seen what I've just seen. Well, you shouldn't. The government don't want you to see it. That's the whole idea of it. It's hidden yeah. out of sight. That's why it's hidden well down here so nobody can see what's happening. Unless you go well out of your way, go into somewhere where you shouldn't really be, and then you see it for yourself firsthand. Well, I can start to understand now why the big tech giants want you cancer. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. They don't like what they see. No. When Steve was to show me the facilities and how it's changed since I was last here, we all of a sudden noticed another boat was arriving. So Steve, we're about to go back to the dock. We haven't even been here about half an hour and another boat's turned up. I believe, is it the third one today? Yeah, this is the third one that we've seen today. Right. We've only been here, what, about 45 minutes? Less than that. Less than that. And as you can see, non-stop, it's like a taxi service back and forth from France to show what's happening. It's quite shocking. I don't know what to say, it just looks like a smooth operation. Yeah, it, it just looks like everything's all coordinated perfectly, like almost like a business. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's just, it's like a conveyor belt of people coming up the ramp, yeah. continuously coming in. And of course it's like a business because there's so much money involved in this that the yeah. people that 
have the ability to stop it don't seem to want to. So let's just explain a little bit about the logistics here. So could you explain what's happening? And I mean, it looks like it costs a fortune what's going on. Well, as you can see behind, the, co the bus that's coming in now is the bus that we was loaded up at the top of the ramp and they're gonna unload that bus there just behind us in the new processing facility. Right. From there, they would get showered, fed, given new clothes, mobile phones, always likes to be. And then from there, they get loaded onto coaches and taken to uh, four-star hotels. I mean, last time I was here, it was fairly small, but this part here with, the, with all the black fencing, it's gotten bigger. It's just, is it, do you think it's expanding a bit more? Yeah, they've extended this whole area over there to the right. That whole area is new and has been extended further upon the new multi-million pound facility. Ultimately, I, I have the impression that this whole area will become a massive refugee camp by the end of the year. Right. And there's obviously a lot of people standing around in um, yellow high vises and of course security as well all around. Um, doesn't look like they're doing much. Absolutely not. These staff are paid by the taxpayer all day long to stand around twiddling their thumbs, just making sure that no far-right activists turn up to film the illegal immigrants. Right, okay. It's all very strange, isn't it? It's bizarre. So let's talk numbers then. You've been documenting this for the past two years, near enough every day, and you see this happen a lot. Could you explain to me a bit about the logistics side of it? Yeah, well, basically, from 2019, it was 1,800 that arrived illegally by boat. Then in 2020, it was eight and a half thousand. Right. The year later in 2021, it was 28 and a half thousand. And then this year, we're predicting at least 65 to 70 thousand. And am I right in saying that only five have been deported? Last year, only five got deported. This year, we're unaware of any being deported. Whether they have or not, I'm not too sure, but nothing's been released to say they have. See, when I hear figures like that, I start to think, why doesn't the open borders lot absolutely love Pretty Patel. Uh, I know obviously she gives it the big end and she doesn't do anything about it, but because she hasn't done anything about it, I, I'm quite confused to... I, I, yeah, I'm it's... exactly the same, because if anything, Patel is open borders. She's allowing thousands and thousands of people to come into the country. We have no idea who these people are. So that's, our, that's ideally what all of the woke left virtue signaling people want. Yeah. So ultimately, I thought they'd all be behind her 100%, but because she talks tough and they get the impression that she's some far right figure that wants to send everyone back, when in reality, it can be further from the truth. No. It just seems like they won't jump on board with it, even though that she's doing what they want. It's bizarre. It's, it is very bizarre. It's almost illogical. Yeah, it really is. So we've just seen the coach go in through the, uh, the black fencing and the black gates. What, um, what happens now from what you know? Well, from there, they'll get, they'll get processed, which will mostly mean they'll take their names and any sort of details they can have. Most of them don't have any identification, so they can say who they want to be. But then they'll get loaded onto a coach and they get driven to four-star hotels, and from there, they will stay for a good three to six months, and then they get put into council housing, and then that's, that's the end of the story. I think with the amount that we're seeing every day, and this was only my first time, and, with, and like we said earlier, within 40 minutes, we saw two landings and a lot of, of people getting off. Um, is it sustainable? Absolutely not. Of course it's not, because there's, there's no term or limit to how far this goes. They're, they've not put any cap on how many people come over. It's just ultimately anyone who lands on our shores gets welcomed in with open arms and put into a hotel. Endless immigration, basically. It is exactly endless immigration, and it's illegal as well. Yeah. Steve, you're one of the very few journalists that actually are covering this scenario, and you've been doing it for a long time. You've also been, well, <laughs> tried to be, anyway, banned from even reporting in the dockyard area. Could you explain a bit about what and why that's happened? Oh yeah, sure. Basically, the Dover Harbour Board tried to serve a ban on me so that I couldn't come anywhere within the docks, both the eastern and the western docks, to film what's happening. They tried to accuse me of harassing and intimidating the, the migrants, right. even though when I'm down there I don't film. They had no evidence that that was even the case. Mm. And then when it came to court, the judge refused to even serve the injunction right. because it was just complete nonsense. How do you deal as well with the, the criticism online? I mean, you've been lambasted, have having hit piece articles against you from so many different uh, organisations. How do you deal with all of that? It's just water off a duck's back at the end of the day. Like, they've got opposing political views to us. They're going to try and silence my views because it's the truth. Right. You're going to make enemies when you're doing this sort of work. If you sit there and read it all day long, then it's going to bother you. But ultimately, I don't even pay attention to it. Fair play.
it's the best way to. Well, Steve, thank you very much for taking the time out for me. I really appreciate that. If you could tell the viewers where they can find your work now that you've obviously been taken off social media. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me on. And you can find me on Telegram under my name, Steve Laws, or on Gab under my name, Steve Laws, or on my website, stevelawsreport.co.uk. Steve Laws, thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Appreciate that. If you enjoy my boots on the ground, honest journalism, you can now support me and help the expansion of the UK correspondence with Rebel News at ukreporters.co.uk.